so let's um, to review for the final exam. Um, this is the um, section which talks about uh, air conditioners, refrigerators, and heat engines. Um, so question one says, just before the liquid working fluid in an air conditioner enters the evaporator, it flows through a constriction that dramatically lowers its pressure. The low pressure liquid enters a large gas filled chamber where the liquid evaporates into a gas. Lowering the pressure of the liquid encourages it to evaporate into a gas because one, the low pressure liquid is more gas like than high pressure liquid. Low pressure gas has less pressure potential energy than high pressure gas. Third one is the rate at which molecules and land from the gas on the surface is greatly reduced. Low pressure liquid is a higher temperature than high pressure liquid. Um, really, the only one that works here is the fact that when you uh, reduce the vapor pressure on top, then the molecules that are in the liquid phase essentially can jump off the liquid and going into a gas phase, and this makes it easier. Uh, for example, like water, when you pump to a vacuum over the top of it, it will boil even at room temperature. Um, so really, the only one that really makes sense is this one. Um, the second one is, it's a cold winter day and your apartment is being warmed by a heat pump. You walked by the outdoor component of the heat pump and put your hand in the stream of air blowing through its evaporator. The air in that stream is, and remember this is a, it says it's being cold winter day and your apartment is being warmed by a heat pump. So the air in that stream is a warmer than the rest of than the rest of the outdoor air, it contains a larger fraction of water vapor than the rest of the outdoor air, less dense than the rest of the outdoor air, or is colder than the uh, outdoor air. Now remember, for a heat pump, what you're doing here is, um, you know, the, the, so this is the heat pump. You know, the idea is, is that when you're running in a heat pump, the, your room is what's actually at the higher temperature. And so what you're doing is um, trying to take heat out of the outside, remember, All right? So you're taking heat from the outside, and you're burning energy in order to satisfy the second law of thermodynamics. And uh, the idea is that you put a lot of heat into your room, OK? And so in other words, it's exactly like an air conditioner, but run in reverse, except to here what you're doing is you're taking heat from the um, great outdoors and shoving it into your house, and that's why it's much more efficient. So the only thing that really makes sense here is that it's just like if you had an air conditioner during the summertime where you're pumping heat from your own room, is that the cold air, the air that would blow on you in your air conditioner in the normal way would be colder than the air which it's, um, than the room air. Um, so when it was a heat pump, you actually would be colder than the outdoor air. So that was the one that should work. Okay. Uh, three, on a hot summer day, your window air conditioner is consuming 500 watts of electrical power. The amount of thermal power heat entering the outdoor air is, one, more than 500 watts, less than 500 watts, but not zero, 500 watts or zero. And basically, it looks exactly like this, is that you're taking heat out of your room and shoving it into the outdoors. What comes in the outdoors is, the, in addition to the heat coming out of your room, is also the work, um, the electricity that you're uh, buying. And so you get a lot of heat that's coming out. So it, clearly it's more than 500 watts. Um, okay. Right. Sorry about that. Um, fourth question. Most electric power generating stations use steam to generate electricity. These stations all have cooling towers or other devices for getting rid of waste heat. There is no way of operating a steam-powered generating station without sending waste heat into the environment because, first, one, energy is always increasing. Two, heat always flows from hotter to colder objects. Three, entropy is conserved. And four, converting all the heat into work would violate the laws of thermodynamics. So, unlike a refrigerator, right, a heat engine, basically, you burn coal, you take a lot of heat out from the hot one. And the idea is, is that in order to satisfy the second law of thermodynamics, you need a small amount of heat into the cold reservoir, or however much heat you need. The colder it is there, the less, the less heat that you need to put into it, again, to satisfy the second law of thermodynamics. 
And so as a result, you can take some of that thermal energy from the coal and convert it into useful work. For a car, this is, you know, the motion it goes into the motion of the car. But for a, um, a power generating station, uh, it's the same thing, is that you're generating electrical power here. Um, and the idea is, is that the entropy here is increasing, but because the temperature is low, that heat that goes into there will cause a lot of entropy, whereas here, you know, entropy increases, it will create disorder. Whereas here, the entropy decreases, but because it's at a higher temperature, um, it decreases by essentially the same amount. But whatever is remaining, can, you can use uh, as useful work. Um, and so, really, the only thing is, is that essentially here is that converting all the heat into work would violate the second law of thermodynamics. And so, you always have to have some amount of waste heat. It's the only thing that makes sense. Uh, fifth one, your home is cold, so you're using both an electric space heater and a heat pump to warm it. Each device consumes 1,000 watts of electricity. Each device provides a certain amount of thermal power to the room air. The space heater provides less than 1,000 watts, uh, and the heat pump provides more provides 1,000 watts. Uh, the space heater provides less than 1,000 watts, and the heat pump provides more than 1,000 watts. The space heater provides much less than 1,000 watts, but the heat pump provides almost 1,000 watts. Last one, the heat space heater provides 1,000 watts, and the heat pump provides more than 1,000 watts. And that's actually the one that goes in. Um, and the reason um, is that, again, you're talk using it as a heat pump, is you're taking heat from the outside air, and you burn a little bit of electricity, and so you get more heat going in than you actually burn in electricity. Whereas, for a space heater, essentially, all the electricity that you burn, the work that goes, goes directly into heat. So you burn, a, you pay for a thousand watts, you get a thousand watts of heat. Here you pay for a thousand watts and you get more than a thousand watts of heat. Um, and so that should do it. And so that's the end of this part, this section of the review.